Hey everybody! So I want to take a moment and show you one of the cool new features in Falcon's DevTools, which is the serve command. Now Falcon DevTools are a suite of um, both web-based and command line tools to help making the, the creation and updating of your Falcon project easier. They are intentionally delivered separately from the Falcon runtime so that we don't waste any additional space or performance when you're installing to a production. So they're just two separate projects. And they're extremely easy to install. So now this video is going to assume that you already have um, a Falcon binary installed with your PHP. Now that's, uh, that's probably a topic for another video if you're not familiar how to do that. But there's a pretty good walkthrough on the website. And <clears throat> in general, all the uh, all the binaries have already been compiled for most platforms, so it's pretty easy to find one. So, assuming that you have PHP and Falcon, so that you can run an application, and then also assuming that you have Composer, because the while there are many strategies within to install Falcon DevTools, the one I'm going to use for today is the Composer install. I think this is the easiest, and I think that if you've been doing PHP, you're more than likely to have Falcon probably installed in your global namespace so that you can install uh, packages globally for things like command line tools. So we're going to install this this way. So it's really easy. We're going to do composer global uh, require falcon slash dev tools. Now it has a, a small amount of dependencies, but it's pretty lightweight overall. So now, now that we have this, uh, we can go ahead and create a new project. So I'm at a folder where I'd like to create a new project, my Falcon test folder. We're going to uh, use the Falcon commands. So we just type Falcon, and it gives us our, our list of commands. We're going to use the project command, and we're also going to use the serve command today. So now project accepts four arguments. We're just going to worry about the first three. We're not going to enable web tools just yet because enabling web tools does install some additional dependencies into your project. What project does do though, is it creates a empty working project from an internal template that we maintain. So it'll look a lot like other people's Falcon projects, which makes it a little bit easier to collaborate on. But it'll be fully functional out of the box. It'll be simple, but it'll work. So um, let's get this one started. So we do Falcon project and we'll call it uh, new project. And the type will be might will be simple. And then the directory will be the current directory because it's going to create a folder for the project. So it has successfully created our, created our controller, our, our controller and our project. So let's go into our new projects folder and let's take a look what this looks like. Now, one of the things that, it, in, aside from the, the normal standard PHP framework fair, where we're going to have some kind of program entry point to uh, manage all of our file requests, this also creates this HT router file, which is a helper for when using the PHP built-in server. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to pass any files which it already sees existing in the public directory, things like images, CSS, static assets, and it's going to deliver them to you directly and not try to pass them through Falcon. Anything that it can't find though, it's gonna make the request against Falcon and let Falcon take an opportunity to try to resolve that request. This is di directly intentional so that, you know, when you start up a project, you can get it running very quickly. And in some ways, it acts a little bit like an HT access file if you don't wanna install Nginx or Apache, because you can add additional rules for pattern matching to how this file will deal with requests. Now, this is really designed to work in production, so making a lot of mo modifications here is really not advisable. This is good for getting off the ground, bootstrapping, but once, once you're at the point where you're ready to start doing deployment, it's advisable to start thinking about having a local server instance. Now, I have worked on projects where we've maintained a very small set of uh, rewrite rules in our server platform, and to make sure that things are easily testable, so we'll test against a, uh, a headless PHP server or something like that. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it run against what we like our mirror of those settings uh, inside this HTU router file. 
Uh, purpose of that being is that it's more lightweight, it's very easy to read, and if you can try to keep that mentality that we don't want to make a lot of rewrites because they can get messy, no matter where they're stored, uh, kind of like almost doubling that pain can, can make it more likely that you're not going to try to add any. Anyways, so that's what that is, and that's there to help us with our serve command. Now, we've got all the base directories, and we're going to have an index controller, which is going to work out of the box. So let's go ahead and start up the server. So there's a serve command, which takes a lot of optional arguments, but as a default, you can call directly Falcon serve, and it'll immediately start up the server. Now, this is leveraging PHP's built-in server, so it's not doing anything too special or unusual, but it's getting a lot of the, the, the noise out of the way. Um, we already know, we, we figure out where your PHP executable is, we automatically set the root directory to the public directory so that there's no issues with finding your public assets, your static assets, your images, and your CSS. And then we initialize this on the HT router and not the program entry point. If you notice when looking at the HT router, uh, this final step is to include really the entry point. So that's a uh, it's kind of like sitting as an intermediary. So when you run this in, in production, uh, you're going to point your application to this index.php directly and not through the HT router file. So now that our server is running, it default binds it on 0.0.0.0, .0 which means that if you needed to test this on a mobile device, uh, you would be able to access this server running through your computer's public IP address. Of course, because it's configurable, if you don't like that because you're worried about some kind of network bleed, someone playing with your instance that shouldn't be, you can absolutely can reconfigure that by changing the hostname property. So no worries there. So let's go ahead and see our site. And there we go. We're right at the uh, index controller that's already working. And just to verify that we're actually looking at a dynamic page, let's go ahead and take a look at the views. And let's go to our index view and let's let's change it a little bit and just go ahead and refresh our page. And there we go. Everything's running. Now you do not need to restart this server because it is going to re-execute uh, this code every single time you make the request. There's no caching enabled by default in a template and you won't really have to deal with this until you get to the point where you start adding things like caching uh, services to your um, DI container. So a step for a different day, and there's plenty of ways of making everything work very seamlessly between development and production and still have those services in place. And some of those will include the HT router, and some of those would probably include a environmental configuration so the app knows what mode it's in. Ultimately, though, the goal here is to get the app running as quickly as possible. And so if you have Falcon and, Com and Composer, you can start a new app in under a minute. And that's really the ultimate goal, because we want you to spend time playing with the framework, asking questions, reading the documentation, and really just having a great time loving this framework. Hope you all have a great day.